Hello, beta testers. <laughs> Normalize refunding what doesn't work. In yesterday's video, I highlighted games that launched in states so unsatisfactory that they instantly killed interest. In some cases, jeopardizing the already unstable futures of their development studios. Frequent developer demonstrations of how out of touch they are not only with the material they're working on, but with their audience, already make typical gamers hesitant. But marketing campaigns that seem to hide more than they show, delays that accompany embargoes restricting reviews up until the game's release, and literal lies told that include features or promise features that never manifest, have burned up what remains of the critical goodwill that players need to have in this industry to which, I say, good. Easy to trigger bugs profound enough to frequently halt, invalidate, or erase player progress. SBMM and EOMM manipulating players from how well they can hear other people to how much damage they're allowed to do from match to match. Placement so aggressive that it can literally take over 20 minutes for skilled players to even find a match in casual of all places. It betrays a lack of competence, a lack of concern for whether the product is even tested. Full releases have turned into early access with consumers playing and paying full price to beta test. To beta test minimum viable products. Their biggest hope is that you buy, and if you hate it, you just forget it and move on. This is a positive for them. So please, help people understand, if they buy something and it's broken, refund it. I'm fairly certain this is the knife twist that you're looking for. Congratulations on 200 likes on the last video. As stipulated, I'm working on the Jamaraquay cover and 300 likes on this video, and I'll cover whatever the top comment suggests. You know, good luck. I remember being on Xbox 360 for Destiny's launch, and Though I did not consider it a complete package until the Taken King, especially after the disappointing Dark Below expansion, the game offered variety and enjoyment, demonstrated a mastery and understanding of gunplay, and most importantly of all, it functioned. I often joke about how America's gotta, how, how down bad they gotta be when they can't even get a gun game right. But Western game developers truly seem to be the problem these days. To be colorful, Western game rack discipline and without honor, a capacity for shame, or a big enough of a hit financially to shake things up, nothing changes. But beta tester, I believe that's where you come in. You will help normalize refunding what doesn't work. Star Wars Jedi Survivor is riddled with issues that cripple the experience, but were it to function properly, Jedi Survivor would without a doubt be worthy of its asking price, specifically on PC where you could mod in jiggly booty Lara Croft skins or oiled up Twi'lek girls, you know. I'm aware what worthy is varies from person to person, but a content rich and passionately crafted game shines through its shortcomings. The game is marred by technical issues, and in layman's terms, it doesn't matter how great a game is if you can't play it, <laughs> you know what I mean? But at least it's not mediocre slop that feels as uninspired and uninteresting as it looks. You know, some 14 year old is mixing up a Roblox level that's more captivating than this, and I'm not here to roast Redfall, believe it or not. Do you know how boring a, a game has to be for, for the AI to leave game journalists with the impression that it's too easy? 
When that IGN footage was getting roasted because the player was clearly inexperienced, keen-eyed players would have recognized that, you know, this was the best situation for promoting Redfall. Why? A skilled gamer can't help but observe something clearly not working as intended. And with all of those jagged cuts, they were obviously editing out bugs. We're, we don't need to talk about it, okay? Now that people have context and they can't refute it after the launch of this game, the red flags of mediocrity were, were flying high, shining bright, ca just casting a reflection. Even the title of the game is different now. Red Fall, Red Flags. And you are learning to recognize them. This game was in development for over four years, and the final product is so bad that yes, AI can be prompted to build a game with better functioning intelligence than this. I hate, I feel like I'm, I'm not trying to go with the game. The gamers with the loudest voices tell a very safe and PG line to protect their opportunities to shill and make more money. I don't hate the player. I guess I hate the game because it's so low quality. The opinions of those guys, however, are bought by the highest bidder, and they routinely dismiss justified criticism as whining, uh, malding, sexism, racism, transphobia. Uh, uh, lately, they're calling it doom and gloom. As Seymour Skinner famously said, there's being right and there's being nice. If people are calling fact doom and gloom these days, so be it. On behalf of the players not spreading their cheeks and declaring how little they need lube, you know, good for y'all, right? But you're them now. Recognize it. Embrace it. When always online 30 FPS looter shooter isn't even the worst of the, what this game has, I mean, come on. Shells and soy boys doing damage control for this? People have issues that they have documented and can prove justifiably reviewing a game poorly is identical to threats of real world violence. You're them. This is game developer speak that we're starting to recognize out of you. The woke nonsense that is telegraphed in trailers where developers think that players care about anything other than gameplay. We don't care how diverse your studio is, homie. We want the gameplay. You remember when Sushi Squad came out and they were like naming the people in the Sushi Squad? Well, we didn't know that. You know what I mean? If your studio is stupid enough to forget the significance of something as, as I don't know, pure as uncut gameplay, give up. The industry itself has recognized and mocks you. Y'all must hate Devolver Digital. But you're earning consequence. This is a busy street that you're stepping into without looking either way. When you get hit, you do not blame the cars. You are in the street. And some of us can acquaint y'all with it. If Redfall works and you're having a good time, I'm happy for you. To everybody else, hear me on this. When Forspoken dropped and the fanboys came out of the woodwork to jab and stomp on that obnoxious mess, good, rightfully so. Tech demos are not games. <laughs> Redfall is not a matter of Xbox versus PlayStation. This is the part in the anime where we see who's pulling the strings. If you watched this far, thank you for listening. Tweet, comment, share, make videos, speak to players, any players, and just make sure they understand. Pokemon is what happens when uh, people just keep buying it no matter what. Halo launched without Forge, without OG maps, without split screen, greedy, no experience granting battle pass, challenges so annoying that they actually ruin the gameplay with entire teams devoting matches to fulfilling inorganic challenges that guaranteed a team loss. Challenges deliberately made, annoying enough to incentivize people to buy challenge skips. The game killed itself. Oh man, what a tragedy. But we gonna pour some salt on the grave and make sure nothing grows here because I'm done with it. And I know for certain I'm not the only one who cut it off before it can metastasize. It's dead, and it can stay dead. In fact, it died twice. <laughs>
in an era where video game movies are probably going to become the new Marvel movies. Why? Because that's what happens when you give these projects to CW tier, She-Hulk caliber, Velma loving, Hogwarts legacy boycotters masquerading as writers that are so high on their own farts that they think that they can do better than anything, regardless of whether or not it's existed for longer than they've been alive. See you in the next one.